Chapter Two of the Short Stop. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Rowdy Delaney, Idaho, USA. The Short Stop by Zane Gray. Chapter Two Riding Away. The fact that Chase had no objective point in mind did not detract from the new and absorbing charm of his situation. No more would he breathe the dust-laden air nor hear the din of the factory. He was free, free to go where he listed, to see new people and places, to find his fortune. He crushed back the pain in his throat. He reconciled himself to parting from his mother and brother by the assurance that so he could serve them best. It was twilight when he reached the railroad tracks, where he stopped momentarily. Would he go to the left or to the right? A moment only did he tarry undecided. After all, there was only one course for him to start on and keep to, whether of direction or purpose, and that was to the right. Darkness settled down by the time he came to the outskirts of town, and now, secure in the belief that he would not be seen, he stopped to wait for a train. It was out of the question for him to think of riding in a passenger train. That would cost money, and he must save what little he had. On Saturdays, before he left school, he had ridden on freight trains, and what he had done for fun he would now do in earnest. Some of the railroads running into town for bad riding, others did not care, and Chase took his stand by the track of one of the generous roads. The electric lights shot up brightly like popping stars out of the darkness, and white glow arched itself over the town. Soon the shrill screech of a locomotive split the silence. Then a rumbling and puffing told of an outward-bound freight. The gleam of a headlight streaked along the rails. Chase saw with satisfaction that the train was running on his track, but he had an uneasy feeling that it was running too fast to be boarded. The huge black engine, like a one-eyed demon, roared by, shaking the earth. Chase watched the cars rattle and tried to gauge their speed. It was so dark he could scarcely see, but he knew the train was running too fast to catch with safety. Still, he did not hesitate. He waited a moment for an oil car, and then, as one came abreast, he dashed with it down the track. Reaching up with his left hand, he grasped the handlebar. Instantly he was swung upward and slapped against the car. But Chase knew that swing, and it did not break his hold. As he dropped back into an upright position, he felt for the footstep, found it, and was safe. He climbed aboard and sat against the oil tank, placing his grip beside him. He laughed as he wiped the sweat from his brow. That was a time when the fun of boarding a freight did not appear. The blackness was all about him fields and woods and hills blurring by. The wind sang in his ears and cooled his face. The stars blinked above. The rasp and creak of the cars, the rhythmic click of the rails, the roar and rumble, were music to him, for they sang of the passing miles between him and wherever he was going. Lights of villages twinkled by like jack-o'-lanterns. These were succeeded after a while by the blank, dim, level, open country that to chase swept by monotonously for hours. Then a whistle enlivened him. He felt the engineer put on the air brakes, then the bumping and jarring of cars and the grinding of wheels. As the train slowed, Chase made ready to jump. He did so presently, expecting to see the lights of a town, but there were none. He saw the shadows of a block signal house against the dark sky, and concluded the engineer had stopped for orders at a junction crossing. Chase hurried along the tracks, found an open box car, and climbed in. It was an empty car with a layer of hay on the floor. He groped his way in the gloom, found a corner, and lay down with his head on his grip. It was warm and comfortable there. He felt tired. A drowsiness overcame the novelty of his situation and he was falling asleep when he heard voices. Then followed the shuffling and scrambling noise of several men climbing into the car. They went into another corner. 
For a while he could not make out the meaning of their low, hoarse whispering, but as it grew louder he caught the drift. The men were thieves. They had robbed someone and were quarreling over the spoils. One was a negro, judging by his sullen, thick voice, and it was evident the other two were leagued against him. The train started up with a rattle and clatter, gathered headway, and rolled on with steady roar. From time to time Chase heard angry voices even above the din of the wheels. He was thankful for the dark and the noise. What they might do if they discovered him caused him to grow cold with fear. He shrank into the corner and listened. Whether it was after a few minutes or a long hour he had no idea. But when the whistle shrieked out again and the train slackened for another stop, he realized the thieves were fighting. Hoarse cries and sodden blows, curses and a deep groan told him of a deed of violence. Let's beat it, one whispered in sudden silence. Here comes a break. The train stopped. Footsteps grated outside and streaks of light flickered into the car. Chase saw two men jump from the door and heard a brakeman accost them. He lay there trembling. What if the brakeman flashed his light into the car? What would be seen in the other corner? But the footsteps died away. Before he noticed it, the train got in motion again, and he lay there, wavering till the speed became so great that he dared not jump off. To ride with a dead thief was not so frightful as to ride with a live one, thought Chase, but it was bad enough. His mind began to focus on one point, that he must get out of the car, and the more he thought, the more fearful grew his state. While he lay there, the train rolled on and the time flew by. All at once it appeared the blackness had given way to gray shadow. It grew lighter and lighter. He rose and went to the door. Day was dawning. The train was approaching a hamlet and ran parallel with a dusty road. Without a second's hesitation, Chase leapt from the car. Through a rush of wind he alighted on his feet bounced high, to fall heavily and roll over and over in the dust. End of chapter 2